Okay, it's Atlanta's number one hip hop station, Hot 107 out and home for the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Of course, you know it's your fault, B High Radio Shout is stepping in the building. I got a New York legend, icon, one of the greats of all time, Ooh. Mr. Cheeks in this thing. What's good with what, the what, 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 what it do, ATL? New York City in the building. Shout out to everybody, 1079. We here, baby. Ooh. Sax, what up, kid? Yo, it's your man, solo artist, Sax, 6 to Entertainment, one of the twin records. Z-Benz, make some noise. Say what up to the Nephew people Z. for me, boy. It's Z-Benz. I'm doing it on Hot 107. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, yo. Got my son I'm with, with me, you, baby. I'm with you, Cheeks. Yeah, yeah I mean, man. Cheeks, talk to me, man. What's up, cousin, man? I mean, you out here still moving around, making yes, these sir. hits, moving and grooving. I mean, what's really good? What you got up your sleeve, my dog? Oh, man, you know, just keeping busy, baby. Basically, man, staying involved in the situation, you know. Uh, the label is Wonder Twins Records, you know what right. I mean? I got a few artists under my belt. That's well, right. family, you know what I'm saying? I got my family slash fans that we rock with. Mm. And this is what it is, you know. I got Tonight we out here with my, my boy Sax, the real Sax, incredible artist. My son Z Bands out here. We just had to promote some new music and promoting the label, and, you know, trying to ring some bells and let them know we still doing what it do. All day, every day. Let's I go. can definitely dig it. Now, I mean, Cheeks, I got to hit you with the current events, man. Yeah. Kobe Bryant passed, and it's been wearing everybody out, including myself. Man, it's Talk hard for me. me. It's hard for me to be here doing it now because exactly. that, that weighs on. Kobe Bryant, God, like, damn, man. That's hurt. You know what I mean? Kobe's one of us, man. Yeah. Blessings, man. Strong, beautiful brother, man. And his daughter, man. Beautiful little baby girl, man. I just all prayers out to them and those that was along on that crazy little situation at a hip helicopter situation, man. Damn, man. God bless them all. I mean, it's, it's just hurt, man. It's like the, the day don't even feel right. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Like, it's kind of like hard to promote. It's hard to, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Because it's really right now, it's day day, you know? Exactly. It's on it's the back of fact. the mind. I mean, when so, you think yeah, about it, hurt, it hurt. Life and death, man. I mean, how does this impact you in that way, and how do you see it different moving forward? Oh, man, um, ever since you know, like, I mean, a death is hurt. Just any death, man. Yeah. From the cats that are going through it in Chicago, the murders, and any, just anything, man. That's just right. life, losing life is painful, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, my thing is, like, you know, my brother got killed, shot in the back of that freaky tie. You know what I'm saying? Everybody yes, knows sir. the story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that touched the world as well. Exactly. Every everything that that if you if you know a person like you don't know a person but you know a person. I don't know Kobe Bryant. Yeah. But I feel like I'm his family, and I feel hurt the same way if I would have lost a, a brother like that. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It just hurt, man. It's just like there's no really no explaining that. It's like it's, it's no way to avoid death, and it just hurt every time it go. It anyone that goes it happens. Exactly. You know what I'm saying it's just painful. Feel. When Big Cap died, that was crazy. Exactly. I was just smoking once with this man. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, y'all yeah. can't smoke. Y'all can't smoke with us. He loved ATL. You know, <laughs> he was always doing with that. It's just what it is, man. And it's just exactly. painful, man. And um, they like like cousin said, man. So we till we meet again, man. He up there with Ty and him, Biggie and him. Facts. They watching over us. That's how I just I gotta look at it from now on like that. You know what I'm saying? Cause they always 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 the good ones go too soon. You know. That's so. facts. Now, fact. I mean, speaking of freaky Tom, man, I mean, just take me back to the Lost Boys jumping off the porch with it, representing that New York and really tearing up the streets at that time. Word. What was that like for you, Cheeks, when y'all jumped into the game raising Kane? Man, it was fun. Yeah. You already know we started out here, well, yeah. from VA, shout out to Norfolk, Chesapeake, you know what I'm saying, Paul Smith, to, to right here, P Street, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, Phil and Greg, the Rim Shop. Yeah. Back in the days, man, y'all you was a part of this right here, this Lost Boy jump off, you know what I'm saying? Oh, man. Oh, uh, man, the Lost Boys, man, it was just a beautiful thing to be able to make music, man, and do what you love to do. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we all quit our jobs, you know? <laughs> and like, yo, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do this music. Yeah. And just give it all it is, win or lose. So, yeah. El, Phil, like it's a great thing, man. Cheeks. Songs like Renee that hit the culture and moved the culture forward, man. See, that's another thing, too. Cheeks, when you think about hip-hop, there are records out here that actually move the culture forward. And right. they are like pivotal points in hip-hop history, black history, and history in general, that when it touches down, 
it kind of changes the trajectory yeah. of the genre itself, man. And I mean, I feel personally like Renee was one of them songs. So what was it like when y'all put that song together and then turn around and shot the video for it as well? Whoa, man. Putting the Renee together? Yeah. Well, you know, the situation happened where I got to give a shout out all the time when I mentioned Renee, the record I made, man, you know, because it was made over a, a fatal incident that happened in, in 40P. Yeah. A homegirl named Ebony got killed. And it was also a, a, a married family. They was just got off the wedding. The lady got shot. The baby survived, but she died. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And at the time, it was like, there wasn't no, it wasn't no music out there touching them like that. Besides mm. my man Tupac, he was giving them things that to, to really bang on and listen to. And, you yeah. know, P.E. and all of that. But mm -hmm. I was taught, you know, to, don't be afraid to, you know, to go to do it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like Tupac said, yo, you gotta, can't be afraid to let it out. You know what I'm saying? So at the time, every, everybody was doing the regular, I, right, you know, we selling drugs or we 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 hustling or we we popping our guns off and all that. But I, I just wanted to make a joint where we could just sit back and be like, all right, let me see what this. Is. You know, when I like to write music and I like to write stories and things, Thanks. and you know what I'm saying. So it, that was a time I was like, yeah, let me let me take a shot at it. I did the the um the lifestyles of rich and shameless. That's I did right. the, you know what I'm saying the get ups and all of that. But sometimes you got to really just pay attention to what it is in the world. So. Facts. When you think else. about the reception of that song, man, how did everybody receive it when you touched down with it? Though? Yo, it was crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I didn't even think it was going to be like, yo, how, how, how that's a hip-hop classic. I don't know. But I, I appreciate it because, you know what I'm saying, I wrote that joint, like I said, on the strength of just a tragedy and I put it together as – as I lost my own personal shorty, you know? Yeah. Because you never thought about, you never think about losing your shorty. Yeah. That's a fact. Nigga, you, you know dude, dudes die all the time. Exactly. Niggas die all the time, B, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kill all the time. But when, when you lose a woman, it's like a whole different ball game. It's like, damn, you don't you don't know the direction no more. Like, if you lose your lady, and all the arguments you had and all that, uh, that don't count no more. That's it's true. it's like, damn, I wish I could argue with my shorty now, you exactly. know? Exactly. Be like that. So sometimes you got to reach out and touch and besides just just making music to make music you make you know i always made wanted to make music to, to send a message and also reach and and and, and you know like i'll be making music the way i see other brothers feel and i feel and i just want to make sure and when i make my music is we all that is touching the same you know it's exactly. fellas you know what i'm saying it may go through some things i may go through I know we all go through the same thing we black you know that? it ain't, ain't no ain't no ain't no walk in the park for us so I try to throw it out of there. the rich and shameless. Shameless, man. man. I mean, talk to me about that, man. Because I mean, once again, y'all were pushing the line for New York at a time where New York was on top, dominating. And then just talk to me about that vibe in New York when that is, that was the industry at the time. And so I mean, what was that like being able to rock out during that time? Oh, that was, you know, that was what time was that? A crazy time, baby. From the East Coast to the West Coast, yeah. New Dog to MOP. You know what I'm saying? CNN, come on, man. I was around the grace, royal flood. I was around some things and that. Well, I, that was a beautiful time, man, the 90s rap game. Oh, shit, excuse me. Nah, I'm Everybody with you. Everybody love the 90s. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. You know what I mean? I mean, you got to get that. But, um, yo, the 90s was when it was starting up. There was no computers like that. There wasn't no internet like that. There wasn't no, no uh, Instagram, no Facebook. What you did was what you did. You get heard about you. That means you put your work in. You know what I'm saying? Right. When you travel out of town and they call you from out of town, that means you circulate. Exactly. There wasn't no videos like that. It wasn't no running around like that. But that's when you really had music and, you know, you got family. I like my family. Is, I got family out here. I got family. Wherever you at, we visit them for the holidays, right? Yeah. Uh, visit your cousins. Lay your music on them. So what we doing in your boom? Now my cousin is out there rocking out there in North Carolina doing what he doing. You know what I mean? Spreading the word wherever yeah. we at. So that's how I really came about, you know? And, uh... Lifestyles been shameless, man. Some dad with some dad with names. You know we got some great hood celebrities. Yeah. You know I mean? They don't they don't get mentioned that much. But now they're getting mentioned. Because exactly. you got certain certain TV shows they got out now that's blowing them up and things like that. You know what I mean? Breaking right. into the codes of the game. But you know, <laughs> that's a cool thing. But you know, as far as like Michael Jackson passed away. Yeah. You got a Michael Jackson in the hood somewhere. Thanks. You know saying that was famous like him, but not in that way, but the lifestyles are the same. Some dad would name, some dad names. That's, yeah. So that's just a token of that. You know what I'm saying? Freaky Ty. 
Oh man. When he passed, man, how did that how did that impact the group and how did that impact you personally though? Man, when Tali died, God, that changed the whole I mean, you know, that was my that was my right hand. That was, yeah. this is why we rock. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm, you know what I'm saying? Like Man, that was that was that was definitely a a a, a heavy blow to the me, freaky I mean Lou, speak nice. I mean, you see my man speak nice. Yeah. There was a lot of things that ain't happened at the time that what we wanted to happen that ain't happened at the time. I mean, as far we was down with a major label universal, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they, they there was things they could have did to, to help situations out and helped the the, the the artists, us lost boys get a little more comfortable in the game, you know? Yeah. Situated. But it, it ain't about that. But when we lost Talik, man, man, it was like everybody went their different way. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we ain't really went different way. Yeah. It was just like, damn, we had to regroup ourselves. Exactly. Like, Talik, uh, man, they meant a lot to me, Lou and Spit, man. We grew up together, go to school together, break, you know, play hooky together. Exactly. Uh, you know what I mean? It was just it was definitely a... a it was four pieces of the puzzle. Now it's like now we're the triangle. You know what I'm saying? And then Speaky went and got his got locked up. Love just me and Lou, bang bang. But you know, God is good. Jaws always on our holding us down. So it's like yo, add all of the the you know the the hurt. You know what I'm saying? Come came the you know the blessings. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. We got our kids rocking rocking out there. Talik's son is freaky guy. He out there doing his business. He yeah. rock, He on tour with me. Yeah. He got a uh, Lou guy cast. That's pretty Lou son out there. He yeah. bringing numbers. He making his. He's doing his work. Yeah. And uh, that's what it is. I mean, yeah, man. You know, water in the grass make the grass grow. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is, man. So that's what it is, man. Life is what it is, and we just rocking and rolling. Just keeping making the music. Keep. Putting things out there to let them know we still rocking, showing the visuals, you know what I'm saying? Still on, on tour, still rocking with the Mollies, doing the road trips and things. So let's keep it busy, man. Now, when you think about New York hip-hop, man, and them lyrics at that time, yeah. did you feel any pressure to come with the bars at that time, though, Cheeks? Because, I mean, you know, folks were not playing about them lyrics at that time. All day, all day, all day. I mean, you came in the game with the bars. You had to come in the game with the bars. <laughs> I mean, KRS One is in the game. LL nice. Cool J in the game. Yeah. Um, MC Shan is in the game. Cool G Rap is in the game. Fact. You know, Rock M's. I mean, the, the, this lyricist game is crazy. Yeah. So you got to come with. You got to come with it. I mean, New York City at the time you was battling all day. You can't be. You can't. They ain't gonna give you the mic if you ain't had a. They're not gonna call you to the mic if you ain't got the skills. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Like. I come in the point. Oh, we got my when I first when I was cold cheeks before I was Mr. Cheeks. Yeah, you know what I'm saying I was cold cheeks. Came in this spot, my man Black Just RP Supreme Team. Yeah, that boy said, "Yo, Miss, Mr. Cheeks in the building." From there, I was that. <laughs> I'm Mr. Cheeks. Black Just called me Mr. Cheeks. It's a done deal. So that's what it was, man. And I mean, I I, did, I was doing a good job. That's yeah. how I feel about it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, man, you definitely had to have your your, your limit game together. I mean. It's, Still today, you got to have your love game. Some get away with it, some don't. But those that know the school of rock know how to rock. You know what I mean? Big old facts. Now, I mean, when you went solo, though, Mr. Cheeks. Solo. And you came with that lights, camera, action, man. Yeah. A club banger right there that's still going crazy in the clubs to this day. Oh, the Talk mother. to me about switching up the style and saying, you know what? It's time to get this party started out yeah, here. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know. I love the parties. And I was out in Miami at that time and I was coming up with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Me, <laughs> Chevy OG, <laughs> Dingo, you know what I mean? Black, yeah. The black Cuban. Come on. Who's out there? And um P uh they I got the call to make that joint at the, you know, that was the time I left New York because at the Tali Pass, you know, I ain't really wanna be up there and around around all of that, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was a lot. It was difficult. It was kinda difficult hanging around people at that time. Yeah. But um, yeah, I went down to Miami. Got, got a little, you know, uh, situated out there. Ran ran the town with my Mad Dollar dudes out of Liberty City. And um, I heard that beat from my boy Bing Dog. Who? Oh, it was a done deal. <laughs> well, I ain't really liked the beat at the beginning. Are you but serious? But then I started burning and drinking and started, yeah, you know what? <laughs> Coming over the hook, boy, man, Dingo and um, Chevy O. And it was a rap, man. Uh, Lights, camera, action, man. I appreciate that record still to this day because that's one of them records that, 
right down the block, Magic City, you know what I'm saying? Come on they now. They gonna play that in the night, <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's how we living, though, you know what I'm saying? Nice cam action, uh, it's still cracking. We just we do it every weekend. We do it whenever we get a chance. You know what I'm saying? It's Everybody tough. does the lights camera action, right? But then you got to jump off with Lil' Kim too, man. Oh, I mean, that was God. another club banger. So I mean, <laughs> and see, also at that time, the beauty of those two songs was that was that New York club music right. that could get felt across the country. It was like, no, that's a New York sound, mm -hmm. but we feeling it down here in the club, and that was what was happening. So yeah. talk to me about that. Yeah, I mean, that's what it is. I mean, like I say, right? We came from New York City, went down to VA to get the, you know, our, 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 our buzz up. Yeah. From Atlanta, from VA, went to Atlanta, chilled out here for a little while. Like I said, with G and them, those and two, two shouts on my man, too short and all that. Show dog. That nigga always getting a check, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bad boy. But uh, we used to run, we was down here, and uh, the, the vibes of, you know, meeting different artists that was out here and different artists that around just around the globe. We put it all together. Like, hold on, that was that was kind of hard how they was doing it. And then we added a little New York to it. Now we got Big Bang. <laughs> and it was just, yo, man, you just add it on. Like out in DC, you throw a little go go in the, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Like, man, all of all, the culture is crazy. You know what I'm saying? And it's mad instruments inside this culture. It's mad. You know, collaborations that just take it different ways and all that. So I ain't never, I ain't, I ain't never think Lil Kim will come up with the jump off and do it off the, the you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's go, Beamers in the Benz joint. That's crazy. Exactly. Just a whole of different runs, and then she had the remix of Mo. I mean, Mob Deep. Yeah. Uh, you right. It was it was cracking them them days, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice. It was nice. What was it like for you moving around in the A town? Early on, before this became Black Hollywood, man. Man, I was used to love it. I mean, I still love it out here. That's when they had, they had more than just the Mad City. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They had them little things on around the cut and all that. <laughs> Shouts to Old Peach Street Liquor Store. That was, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I just just that was you know Freaknik days and all days I was feeling good, man. Like yo, man, getting the start. I was around. You know, when, when Lil Jamal and all of them was coming up, you know, yeah. the illegal, you know, remember the groups and all that, but yeah. man, ATL, man, carried me a long way, man. I'm talking about, we used to, back when going to the, the college, before, when Swiss was cutting hair and all that, you know. Oh my about? God. Real shit, right? Indeed. Real shit. But, yeah. Green Eyes, what up, you know? Talk Black colleges out industry, here, though. son? Talk Son. to me about that industry, though, Cheeks. I mean, what was it like when you saw the industry industry start to move from New York to the South or to the West, for that matter, man? Because West, I think he was there doing it all. Oh, it was, it was, yo, it was crazy, yo. Uh huh. It's like, yo, you know, the biggest illest thing I ever did was with the Dog Pound. The music made me hard. The uh, the uh, remix, man. Oh, that was at the time. Biggie and Tupac had beef. You know what I'm saying, son? We was out there on the West Coast. That was East Coast, West Coast beef, corny shit like that. Talk to me about being in hip hop at that time because that was a real that deal was some time. Other shit. Hell yeah. What was going through your mind trying to maneuver on the West Coast in the middle of an East Coast, West Coast beef? Yo, it was crazy, but it wasn't crazy to us because we was we was, I guess, respected and running with the cast that was out there. I mean, you yeah. know, Snoop Dogg, I ride with Snoop Dogg, you got Three cars in back of us, three cars in front of us. We rolling trees. Oh, we ride, we're going to the motherfucker. Uh, what, what, what was the smooth, the, uh, the little titty ball? We go to uh, <laughs> Snoop got all type of things going on, man. Yeah. I mean, like L.A. It's like it's different, man. I mean, I one day I was driving down an alley. Oh my god, I couldn't believe I went down this alley. You know what I mean? I'm talking <laughs> about the tat though. It's a <laughs> kept it cool because it was like in a little um. Uh, Mexican area, not a Mexican area, but when while I went around the block, it was Mexican. I don't exactly. know what to understand, but it was it was, it was a different area. But I was, I was nervous right there, man. But I mean, damn, and my man. So it was one night I was riding down in L.A. and was doing the, you know, was around, I was leaving my man George Clinton studio. Talk to Ooh, me shit like that, right? I'm driving down the block and with my, my my brother Van Dam. He like, yo, uh, you know, the cars was coming down the block with no the, the uh, no lights on. So you know you don't you don't flash them. That yeah. nigga like you don't flash them. They they doing a they doing a uh, initiation test. What? What? L.A. was crazy. I ain't know. I mean, I just stayed in the room or I just you know. I mean, I remember. it was crazy. It was crazy. But I it was mean, fun. George you know Clinton that? Studio though, man. I mean, that's the P Funk. P Funk. Break it down, Timmy, man. What was happening? I was just game to make make a record. You know what I'm saying? 
and uh, that blew my mind, right? Yeah. Shout out to Uncle P, man. You know what I'm saying? George Clinton is hard body, man. P Funk of them all, man. But uh, yeah, that that was the beginning of my, of my just my journey, man. Oh man, L. A. I did the um shout out to Don Cornelius. You know, I did Soul Train. Yeah. Man, back when Soul Train was popping. I got, I got to do Soul Train before he passed away. And then when he passed away with Shamar Moore, you know. Yeah. I was out in L.A. for a minute, man. I was loving L.A. until that earthquake hit. You know what? Things trying to pit at me. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Let's go. But I yeah, can definitely dig it. It's real. Now, you got family in the building with you right now, too, man. That's a fact. I mean, Sack, Z, I oh, mean, I fellas. Good. I mean, Dang I had good. a chance building. to get into some of y'all music as well. And I was enjoying... I'm going to start with you, Sax. Premier, on the track. <laughs> you fool. I mean, when I heard that, I understood what was going on with that thing, man. I mean, break that banger down to me and how you got blessed with that track. Um, you know, through through the circle, you know, somebody sent the track to me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's something uh, Preem, I guess, was just sitting on or whatever. But anyway, it got over to me. Mm -hmm. And I just... Uh, from from looking at the, the the industry today, yeah, I was taught, you know, to watch the circus, never join it. Uh -huh. So from that perspective, when I look at how how the people are all dressed up with the with the braids and the, and I'm not no disrespect to nobody, mm -hmm. but kind of look kind of clownish from the the era that I come from. That's and, right. Uh, and when you're hungry and you're starving. Start looking like food. Talk about them bars on that track, though, man, and the flow. Because, see, you didn't play when it came to riding that track as well, man. So, I mean, break Appreciate that down that. to me, Sack. I mean, I, I, I always want to make something with some some substance in it. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And 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 I know what, what my fan base, my audience want from me. They want they want that that core hip-hop. And we ain't, we ain't trying to play with it. We're trying to preserve it and keep it alive, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, my mentors, such as my bro, Mr. Cheeks, man, and I'm just keeping it real. And I feel like I can make records without taking from the integrity of who I am and what I stand for. But I'm not, I ain't playing with it, you know. Just, exactly. I love hip-hop. I'm digging that. Now, Z-Band, that run it up, man. You know, I was marinating on that as well. And hey, you made that reference to Kobe in that thing, man. Yeah, I mean, talk to me about that banger right there. Cause first of all, I was feeling that flow as well. But then, with you talking about Kobe in that at this point in time, it kind of wore me out a little bit, man. So I mean, first tell me how Kobe impacted you and hearing about his death yesterday. But then also talk to me about your flavor that you kicking out here, my dog. Like, I listen to a lot of um, like Uzi, and yeah, Bruce and Cardi. So yeah. it's like, I'm in a new generation, mm -hmm. so I just like put everything together, put yeah. all my, my artists together in, like, one song. So I just made it like that. Exactly. Now, that reference to Kobe in there, though, man, I mean, what kind of fan of Kobe was you? Like, he wasn't, he wasn't, like, one of my favorite um, basketball players, but I looked up to him. Yeah. Because, like, when I was, like, growing up, we would always, like, crumble a basketball, and like, like not a basketball, like a paper. Paper, like, yeah. And, like, scream Kobe. So it's, like, like, it was, like, crazy. And then also his daughter died in it, so it was like even more crazy. My God. My God. My son 15. Exactly. Crazy. So nah. Crazy. Cheeks, yeah. pull that mic up to you too, man, because see, I understand that that music makes you high. All day. And then you hooked up with that boy Keith Murray on that thing as well, oh. man. I mean, talk to me about that. And see, I didn't know that y'all was still <laughs> rocking like that. So, I mean, what was that like when y'all got in that studio and crunk some stuff up? Oh, man, that was a ride over from North Carolina. Yo, nigga, we got to look. We're going to make this when we get back. And that's all that was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Binky Murray just, like I say, man, we just one family in this hip-hop industry, man, I guess, you know? Yeah. And, um, just respect each other, and I, I dig everything he do. He dig everything I do. And it's just like, yo, we hang out without music. We just yeah. hang out, just go to the crib, burn it down, and, uh, you know, just talk about shit. And, uh, just hang out. I mean, we got a uh, little uh, restaurant out in New York called mm -hmm. the Soul, Ex Soul, Soul Exchange, where yeah. I got out there in, uh, in with my partner, Mark. Yeah. And we all come there, and we just do this this TV show called Chopping It Up With Cheeks. And that... From there, we just do it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Might go to the studio, bang out. But Keith Murray is always there. From Keith Murray to uh, Need the Exotic, Royal Flush, 
um, intro, Horace Brown. I mean, I'm not my connect. My family is the same as it's always been. Yeah, it's, uh, we just fly under the radar, I guess now, because we got our youngins doing their thing, and also our artists and other things we're just trying to get into. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I mean, Queens niggas break down Queens, Queens for niggas. those that don't know no better, man. Oh, you know about Queens, man. <laughs> with the guys with the the houses and the guns and the damn ceilings. <laughs> That's there. right. <laughs> I mean, you know, we got the buildings and all that. We just keeping it cool, you know. Yeah. The smooth cast from Queens. I mean, playing our part in New York, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we got our family in all five, all, all five um, boroughs mm -hmm. of Brooklyn, Manhattan, Bronx, Staten Island, and Queens, you know. That's Play right. for the same team. But we just the niggas that just be over there that, you know, when you want to get out of town, there's only two airports. You got to come to Queens, JFK, LaGuardia. Let's get it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> two ways out. Let's <laughs> Now, fellas, I know that y'all got a strong ATL connection as well. I mean, do you care to break that down to me? Jeez. Oh, what up? Well, you know, ATL is um, uh -huh. long. I came here a long time. I got some friends that I did shows down here with that met shorties, and now they here, and they, you understand? <laughs> yeah. They're taking kids to school. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so the, the, it's deep out here, man. Like I said, from Freaknik, man, we've been down here rocking and rolling, man. And that's a long time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my man Big Gip, one of my main dudes out here. My big bro, what up, though, Gip? Gip. Well, what up, boy, boy? You know what I'm saying? We, got a, we did this joint that we never really pit, 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 put on the peoples yet. You know what, what? I'm saying? Yeah, it's classic. We might, we might just go back to the recaps and just... Do a video for it because I know he got all this candy colored joints out here. And I, got, <laughs> I got my New York looking joints, so yeah, put them together real quick. Probably see some some joints, but yeah, you know, out here is, is a beautiful thing. Shout out to Big Boy, you know what I'm saying? My man Dre, uh, three thousand. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my man uh, Jermaine Dupri, the brat. I mean, I got some friends out here, man. You know, shout out to um, jagged edge, of course. <laughs> Drew Dewey's. Yeah. Go ahead, man, Sax. You run, run down some family members we got out here also, man. We living out here, man. Indeed. Uh, my f my first introduction to Atlanta, uh, matter of fact, I was out in Five Points doing my normal one-two, picking up some albums, stopping by the herb stop, you know, getting my incense and oils <laughs> and all that yeah. good stuff, yeah, man. Yeah, and yeah. I looked over and looked on the sidewalk, man, and I said, man, that looked like 3000 <laughs> and it was like telecommunication, like tele how how do you say uh, telecalepathy, yeah, whatever telepathy, they telepathy, telepathy, yeah. yeah. And he back to me like, nigga, it is me. <laughs> Come holler, <laughs> right at my sh shop, you know. So I, I go over and we we follow up in there, we we get to talking, and he asked me, you know, what was I doing in Atlanta, or whatever have you, and from there, man, that's who introduced me to Goody Mob. Took me to the atrium Ooh. for the skewing on the Barbie video shoot with Raekwon and had me at Tower Records yeah. when the Quimini <laughs> album was out. Man, he had me everywhere. I mean, house number, studio number, cell number, and we we that's that's my introduction to Atlanta through through uh, Andre. I met Luda and the the list goes on, man. But big up to all my AT aliens out here. You know what I'm saying? Because it's all love, even. Uh, DJ Jelly, Big Oom, Baby yeah. D, it's, it's, yeah. all, it's, it's all fam, you know, and and we all kept in, in touch, and I stayed on the ground. But big up to my AT aliens, it's fam out here. Talk to me about being from up top, coming through here for Freak Nick, man. What was that experience like, fellas? <laughs> Ooh, boy, talk to me. We got footage of that. <laughs> Ooh, I could just show you, but I'm just saying. <laughs> nah, man, Freak Nick was crazy, man. Them parties in the back of the at the back of the rim shot, man. Yo, like I always say, man, shout out to um, Phil and Greg. They always hold it down. Mello. Shout out to my man, um, yeah, yeah, Light. Big, big Duke, and you, you know what I'm saying? And, oh, yeah, man. Everybody. You Remix, know what I mean? man. That's when it was like, yo, I mean, like, man, them stories of Freaknicks, man, is a beautiful thing. I mean, coming from New York to down here in Atlanta. Indeed. You know, they cook out here. You know what I mean? <laughs> and the shorty's talking about me, man. My grandma's nigga, let's like, go. <laughs> we used to walk around this joint, man. I'm talking. What what, what actually happened to to Freak Nick? Like some some crazy shit popped off, and then um, well, what happened was the, uh, the, the 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 crowd got so big yeah. to where 
it would literally be a party on the expressway. So the expressway, they'd be stopped wow. up and folks would be out partying. But then if an emergency happened, the uh, nobody. the ambulances couldn't get to nobody because literally it was too many people in the city. That's a fact. And you could not, you could, the service streets was a party. That's so a it was nothing you could do. If you was having a heart attack, they was going to find you out the free nick. That's crazy. After, we never after had it like that. You know? Dig it, yeah, yeah. And, and that's what I think really yeah. caused everything to go away because it was just it was a it wasn't safe. It was crazy. Come on, it was priesty. It was bananas, yo. I don't understand, man. Yeah, that, it was dead, man. I, I remember them days, man. I remember them days. And see, the thing about it is kind of like mythological because to tell people these stories, just to say that, hey, man, imagine 285, I-20, and 75, 85 being like a parking lot, the expressway, Yo. a parking lot with folks shaking asses, smoking yeah. blunts, party, yeah. whipping yeah. out the grill out the tr back of the truck. You're I mean, over that nigga now, come right? on, man. Come on, man. This is beautiful, I mean, man. cats was like cars backed up, and if you cars like backed up, we hopping out of cars, getting in other cars because the traffic is yeah. stopped. Yeah. Yo, so, remember, yeah. They remember yeah. also B. Also B. They forgot a lot of functions from New Orleans, the Gavin. Yeah. You know, out in Atlanta you had the um hold on now. Out in Atlanta you had the one of the biggest um uh, hip hop one. events ever. Uh, they, uh Jack the Rapper. Jack the uh, Rapper. Yes, sir. Changed my life. That's why yes, that's what I'm talking about when I came from Virginia. I came down here for Jack the Rapper with the Alley Cats. It was a done deal. <laughs> Holy shit. Yo, I'm just saying that's that's why it all started. I just it just became just from Hampton, Virginia. You know, Hampton, Virginia, Norfolk, Hampton College. Yeah, yeah. They, College. They, they would have the jazz fest, or weed fest, days, cousin. Yeah. Holy, yeah. When you look back over your career, though, cheeks, what was the greatest time for you? Greatest time for me? Yeah. My biggest. Oh man, my biggest uh, having my biggest adventure on. Through all this music, mm -hmm. I say the American Music Awards performance Ooh. with Diddy doing the uh, Lights Camera Action remix. Yeah, I, I, that was fun. Yeah, that was fun. I met my girl that uh, Tyrese ain't let us give him brains in the uh, Baby Boy movie. Yeah, you know I mean all that went down. <laughs> oh, I seen that little piece. <laughs> I'm just saying that was my life back in the day. You know what I'm saying? It was. I was around some crazy, crazy situations, man. Oh, Ben Stiller. Shout out to Ben Stiller, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying But uh, yeah I mean Good times man Good times man I mean still good times But damn Ain't nothing like When you was younger You know what I'm saying Yeah Like I be telling my son man You only a teenager once Come on Cause you come in old You be a teenager Then you're, then you're old again <laughs> You know what I'm saying You one years old You come 13 Then you're 20 years old Let's go I'm just saying You're, 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 one, you're once a teen You're never a teen again Come you on I mean as a young teenager, though, Cheeks, did you think that you was going to have the wild ride that you had? I, as a t back in them days, you never, you didn't think you was going to make it to 19. Ah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Them days. Yeah. Niggas threatening you because you, you rocking so hard. Don't come to this neighborhood, nigga. It's on. Man, I'm talking about carrying guns in your book bag on just to, to grab the mic. <laughs> what they talking about? You know what I mean? <laughs> Life is crazy. It was young. But uh, it was, it, that was competition. Yeah, yeah. Cause yeah. you going to a different neighborhood, man. You had to hold it down. I mean, you had, we ain't had, like I said, we have, like, you know your family, you can call your family, more, more way to North Carolina now. You can text them, yo, man, meet me there type thing. Yeah. Back in the day, you know what I'm saying? There wasn't no phones like that. It was beepers or the big yeah. ass thick cheese donuts. Mm. You know and the saying? phone might be busy if you try to call it. <laughs> you better believe it. Boop, boop. <laughs> exactly. That's a fact, so. Yeah, came a long way, still doing it, so it feels good, man. Like, like still banging out, man. Damn. R.P. to Kobe, man. That's crazy. You know what wow. that's, that's like, we talk about our, our adventures, you know? And then that that's always just comes in my head. I, I'm yeah. thinking of Kobe. It's like, what the hell is that about, right? Yeah. You can talk about everything, but then you'd be like, damn, then this, that's, that just hits you real quick in your brain. Like, exactly. To all our fallen soldiers, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, uh, just enjoying life and living lightly, you know what I'm saying? I can dig it. Okay, now, fellas, I also understand that y'all got a hip-hop art exhibit, man. What's that all about? Get that up. The, 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 the hip-hop art exhibit, um, it's, it's a vision that I had, you know, starting out, and um, I was able to put it into fruition, and I like things to happen organically. Mm -hmm. 
because ain't nothing forced in the universe. And so I met the the artist. I have an artist assigned to my entity, which is an umbrella up under one of the twins, six two entertainment. And uh, I have an artist out of Russia mm-hmm. that does acrylic paintings. Mm. So we meet, and uh, I was able to convey my vision, my concept to her. And shout out to uh, Tatiana from Russia out there in Florida. And uh, sh- sh- they were doing modern and contemporary art. And so she was like, they need something different. I had the vision. I can draw, but I I, I I ain't no good with paint. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But to make a long story short, she is wonderful. And so I told her, I said, listen, why don't you come over into the hip-hop lane? She didn't know nothing about hip-hop. I said, this is what we're going to do. I said, paint album covers that that give you that feel like when you walked in and brought the cassette or the 45 or the 12-inch, paint that, but 50 by 72-inch. And we document everything from when the paint first touched the canvas, mm-hmm. stretching the canvas on the frame so so we can grow with it. Exactly. And then I sent it to everybody, and we started out in hip-hop, but we're going to go into some more genres. But right now, we hip-hop, we like probably like 20 canvases in. Mm-hmm. And uh, what we're going to do is, being that we're affiliated with everybody, is is we're painting people that we know mm-hmm. and preserving the culture. So the pioneers get to come out, the DJs, they give their, their commentary about what the hip-hop meant to them. They get to autograph the paintings. And they also have the opportunity to take the painting home with them because a lot of times they look up and they just see where somebody done painted something, sold it, the fan got it. Yeah. I wanted to make sure they had first dibs yeah. on it. And I tell you about this Lost Boys canvas. It's, it's crazy among others, but uh, we're going city to city, mm-hmm. state to state with the hipography, art exhibit, and uh, uh, documentary. And in there, like I said, we're going to have some of the, the, the great pioneers DJs, entrepreneurs on these canvases, and uh, they will be for sale as well. And if the fans are able to get them, because I think that each one should go with, say we got Brand Newbie. Mm-hmm. Somebody out of Brand Newbie need to have this painting. Damn right. We got Outkast, Big Boy. You need to get this. Exactly. We got Goody, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Hey, Gip, Cujo, CeeLo, yep. somebody, Timo. Yeah. This need to go in in the family. Uh, not just, but it's there, you know, and uh, it's going to be huge. And that's also a segue to my first official album off the Wonder Twins label. It's also entitled Hipography. So it was a strategic thing to where we got the hip-hop, the core hip-hop heads in here. Mm-hmm. Then we get to introduce my my project, you know, through Wonder Twins and, and keep that, that traffic going back into the hip-hop, you know. And uh, I just want everybody to stay tuned and be supportive, and we're going to do the first one here in the ATL. So all my ATL in, stay tuned. We're going to keep y'all updated, you know what I'm saying? And, and uh, yeah, hipography, and that means it's a word I made up yeah. when I was 15 years old, which is the art of the art of true hip-hop. For those that possess true skill in art form, my God. you know what I mean. And I'm just—I'm here with him. Yeah, we I'm here with him. So, cut. We over here doing it. And, and like we was talking earlier about the the, the strategy part of it, mm-hmm. stuff the st- stuff got to be str- strategic. You know what I'm saying? And I think it working with the right people mm-hmm. for the right reasons, you get the right results. Exactly. You know, and I'm thankful to be here. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, with legends, brothers like yourself that are being vessels. You know what I'm saying? We got nephews representing the next generation. Z. Yeah, Z fans. You know what I mean? And it's it's an honor to be here. And I'm glad that we, we doing something that means something. Exactly. I got another question for you, though, Cheeks. Yo, cuz. Gil Scott Heron, man. Unk, unk, what up, baby? I mean... 
a legendary uncle like Gil Scott. Talk to me about having that as a part of your life early on, man, and the information and the game that he laid on you about the revolution. Yo, okay, it's like growing up with Uncle Gil is like different. Like, um, you never, I, I never took the trips I took with him and Mom and Patty to D.C. to the, you know, like to the. I don't know what it took me. It took me some, uh, some D.C. Uh, road trip with they they school and they was teaching them music and all that. From there, I was just zoned out, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And from just being around them, you know, from the house when you're walking and you're smelling it in the room and the music is playing and the beads, you know, the, the old beads curtains. Nigga, <laughs> yeah. When you go to this room to that room, you go through the beads and see y'all, let's yeah. go. Yeah. Oh, uh, man, it's the influences, man. I mean, uh, yeah. The, he taught me how to just talk to the crowd, and I mean, I learned a lot from him from the, from the, uh, uh, you know, the, um, the, the Blue Note days. I mean, he the last, before he left, he was doing these uh, concerts at the Blue Note, you know, up in New York and all of that. Where you know, it just changed my mind. I mean, it just changed, it blew my mind of um, like how an artist such as well, I wanted to be like him as far as like just seeing his performances, yeah. but I'm a rap artist, and you could just. Your band is rocking with you. You leave your band on the stage, go downstairs, kick it with your family for a second, a little half, 20 minutes, or the day doing, doing whatever they do. <laughs> smoke your weed with your family, go back upstairs. I'll be right back. I'll be like, I mean, I learned a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it taught me how to be an ill and insane, huh? You know what I'm saying? Also, like, you know, just, uh, well, he wasn't that that ill with uh him. he only had he only had one woman i seen when it was Ma, right so i ain't really know about the, the, the do it's but uh it just told me how to be a great artist i mean i just followed his his, his footsteps in the as far as like uh you know just being yourself you know what i mean like it ain't about the jewelry it ain't about the money and it ain't about none of that it's just the the, the music of touching more than all of that you know what i mean they can't wear your jewelry they can't rock your ring but that music and anything will touch him so hard so you know what i'm saying that's all i think about so what about the responsibility for the content that you create, man? Because, I mean, he yeah. also moved the culture for it. That's what I'm saying. He was the original rapper. Exactly. You see I what mean, I'm saying? He's the messenger, right? Yeah. So, yeah, he was definitely, like, definitely, like you said, he was like the original rap dude. You know what I'm saying? We did that Reagan record. No, they didn't really pay. They paid attention to us when they, when you, when you, when you do a little history on that, that Reagan record, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, the, the 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 revolution won't be televised and and m grandma's hands you know what I'm saying I'm talking about Homer's way to hate is yeah. his music is just it talks to those that need it yeah. you know what I'm saying like like if, if you going through something he, he, he got that that music that'll bring it to you, you know what I mean? yeah the integrity of music that's always it, we lost that in, along the way but it, it, ain't nobody making music like him you know what I'm saying Teddy Pendergrass yeah. you know what I'm saying the the whispers they don't make they ain't making these no more so as I you know that was is 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 beautiful to be raised around that I guess yeah I could say you know what I'm saying it was, it was that's that's I'm glad that I was touched by that 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 you know what I'm saying that sword or whatever you call it man yeah. to be able to be not just to make music but to make music you know what I'm saying exactly or, when you think about hip hop as an art form and as a culture from the time that you started to where you see it now, man, I mean, how do you feel about the changes and the uh, the way it's morphed into all these different genres and stuff that we got out here right yeah, now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like perfect dude that would tell this to anybody that will hear that, yo, Eric Sherman. Yeah. He's a perfect dude that runs us down. I always agree with him because he says it's they it's different hip hop genres and it's hip hop it's different hip hop. Um, you know, it's not young who's I don't know. I don't know how to say it. Like different era, it's different coach. I mean, it's different categories. Categories in this hip hop thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when I when I was going when when Fifty said some some beef about me, like T shit is whack now and all that back in the days, you know, I, I was like, I had to respond because I gotta respond to that. Yeah. But we don't make the same music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Your music is that music. My music is what you know. That's uh, we on a different, we on a different zone of music, nigga. Like Fifty Cent got the his type of music he make. Sass got his type of music he make. I got my kind of music I make. Um, I just got that kind of music. I mean, it's just a different genre, right? But it's like you got to go at niggas. 
Yeah. I mean, that's how I was raised, you know. So making music, you gotta you could you could be you could make music about partying, you can make music about uh getting in niggas' asses, you can make music about just chilling with your lady, you can make music about uh, politicians, whatever you wanna make it about. You know what I'm saying? That's the beauty of the thing. These new the new artists out now, it's their turn. I ain't mad at them. They doing it differently. They getting new money. But it's some it's something that you be looking at and like, okay. And it's something that you be like, all right, that nigga popping. But that's like back in the days, right? Yeah. So I'm the nigga that ain't gonna wear no tight jeans, no skirts, no purses, no <laughs> earrings, no, no, no fingernail polish. <laughs> that's my rap style. You ain't gonna catch me outside with my mom's t shirts on or my sister's jeans. You know what I'm saying? So that's that ain't disrespecting them niggas. But we ain't them niggas, you know what yeah. I'm saying? That's not our hip hop over here. Yeah. That's their hip hop over there. They may be called hip flip flop with their toes out, no socks on. I don't know what they call it. <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm just saying what I be saying. Me, myself, we on some other militant. We got to be militant. You know what I'm saying? I seen, I ain't going to lie. Got nothing to do with what I'm talking about, but it got something to do with what I mean. Yeah. It's a guy out there called uh, Billy Porter I seen at the Grammys. Mm -hmm. He had a. Chandelier hat on, eyelashes, lips, toe up. He looked better than my wife outfit. I'm like, what the hell is this dude? And he got a beard. I'm not mad at nobody. I'm just saying, damn, the game done changed. Always around this bing bing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if you could see people, men kissing each other on TV, the game done changed. They ain't respecting the culture no more. They're not respecting nothing that we, we it was back in the days, it was girls wear pink. Men wear blue. But I guess, you yeah, know, it's a new world order now, and that's what they do. And I, my thing is this. I ain't mad at nobody. Let me do me. Live you. I live me. Let me make my music. And that's, let's enjoy life. You know what I'm saying? But the new artists, do what you do. I'm not, um, not going to be mad at nothing they do, right, son? <laughs> we just laugh and smoke some trees. See, talk to me about coming out of Queens with it, though. Like you said, the discrepancies that you might have had with 50s or the Mob Deeps and stuff like that. What was it like during those times where you said, you know what, I got to get at people? Oh, that was, I mean, that was Respect. just what it is, though. Yeah. Uh, ain't we, Respect. I'm a cool, yo, I'm going to tell you, like, I'm a cool nigga. Not the fool nigga, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm a cool, I'm all old day. I love, I would love my brothers and sisters. I respect everybody. But, you know. Just that, you know, sometimes you got to, damn, man, I really got to do this. You know what I'm saying? You got to be doing that. You don't want to hit nobody. You don't want to slap no person in their face. That's, But then after you slap them, you'll be like that. You needed that. Mm -hmm. I ain't want to do that. It hurts me, it hurts, it hurts me more than it hurts you. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to laugh about this <laughs> shit. But, you know, it's like, yo, man, you have to you have to get at people. You know what I'm saying? It's like, um, uh, you know. Uh, we used to battle back in the days, you know what I'm saying? We just got to go to war. It's friendly competition. But nowadays, it's like, niggas is dying over this shit. It's like, the youngins don't get it. You can't heat a nigga and just be like, ah, oh, I see you tomorrow. You know what I mean? <laughs> nah, nigga, what he saying? And his crew is like, yo, we got the guns ready to kill him at the show tonight, nigga. It's like, damn, this nigga's just rapping, nigga. <laughs> but that's why, you know, you be seeing the battle raps and all of that. That's ill. Yeah. Because... A nigga can stand there and let somebody spit in your face. Yeah. Say, suck my balls. Say, fuck your mom. Y'all <laughs> yeah. got heart. Y'all good. Exactly. <laughs> that nigga be done already. <laughs> I can't be doing none of them battle raps, man, like that, man. I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, it, was a it was a different way you battle back in the day. Damn, man. Damn. Damn. That is I take your girl and things was, like that, respect. but now niggas is like, they got his, came in your girl's eyeball. They got, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the cipher was different. You, cipher you, you, can, you can battle and and have respect. Yeah, at the same give that. So, no, so it was different. And the league, much respect to the to the URL and, and everybody out there in the battle culture. We got family friends in, in there too. Don you know DeMarco, I mean? Schmack, and just, all them just boys. Just to let people know that bars really exist. You yeah, know what really. Saying? So when when people playing with it, just something. Keep on the back of your medulla, you know what I'm saying? I it's feel that. Stress. Still real. Like, you know, a lot of them get away with things, right? Yeah. A lot of camps got up and comers that just, oh, because they with that camp, they hot. Mm. 
Now, we got some dudes that's going to make sure you understand we hot. And this one, the Twins and the 6-2 Entertainment, this LB Mafia, the Mafia, music, art, film, into all that. Ooh. That's the Mafia. Mm-hmm. So we hit. Z-Band. Z. Talk to me, man. I mean, what are you bringing into the game? And then just tell me some of the jewels that your dad done dropped on you that you hitting these folks with, man. Um, my dad was like, he had a lot of bars yeah. and stuff. And plus, when I go to his shows, like, I performed at um, City Field. It was like a promotion show or something. Yeah, that was nice. And, um, yeah, I, I was watching him, like, perform. So I, like, stole some moves from him. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Exactly. Yeah, well, yeah. But now I'm working on like videos and something and stuff. But um, I was working on a um a album. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna wait to like drop videos and stuff. So I can yeah. Dig that. I can definitely dig it. You gonna come to that run up, run up, run up video? Right? No, that run it up. That thing was hard. Run it up. That we're thing is that, hard. Right? We're, gonna get that. we're gonna do that video soon. Like I mean, we might do that Super Bowl weekend, right? That's Ooh. Gonna have a little fun. That's gonna Family be nasty. Out. <laughs> we, was, we was all supposed to do the um the go get it thing in um Jamaica or, or some or Miami or something. Yeah, that's Miami. Yeah. We're going out there after that Super Bowl. Oh, Lashley, <laughs> fellas, do y'all got anything else that y'all want to get off y'all chest? And how can these folks contact y'all, man? On Instagram, at ZBands. I just made a Twitter. It's at ZBands, too. So, okay. like, everything at ZBands. Set it up. The real sax. That's what two X's like a sax of phone. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> I'm on that Instagram. You can hit me at the, the real mistakes. D A. M I S T A C H E E K S 132. Or you can hit my promo page, Mission Cheeks Lost Boys. But the one you want to hit me on, you're going to DM me, get in touch with my label and all that, make some moves and some TV shows and some shows and make it a better, 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 Please reach out. It's, we trying to Yo, get, we out here, yeah, man. ATL. Yeah, ATL. Yo, ATL. Let them know. Um, we want to throw a little uh, one of the twins, little showcase. If you know, you got a club, you know what I mean? E, Big Bang, B Hob, you know what I'm saying? You come through, host it. I'm like, with it. Up, we do little things over there, like that, like a little blah, blah, blah. And uh, Big Bang, right? It's the mob. Oh! Hey, LB fam. Life. You know B Hob Radio shout it. It's Hobbit 079, man. Let's go. Let's get it. Radio Shouty!